Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Romani and welcome back to this YouTube channel that takes kind all kind takes on all kinds of issues related to narcissistic, toxic, emotionally abusive and otherwise difficult relationships and people. So we're going to take on another episode in this proverb series. And like I said, this proverb series is going to go on forever because every time I think we're done, you wonderful subscribers are dropping more comments in there and saying, here's a proverb you haven't thought of. But we're going to take on another proverb today. And that one is going to be, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You can see where this road is about to go. But if you are new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button here. Please hit that bell. You'll get notifications if you hit that bell every time we put out a new video. But let's take on this proverb. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Now let's face it, enough of us have taken this proverbial road to hell and know that the potholes can really take you out. The meaning of this proverb is very clear. And I have to say, looking into the origin of this one was a little bit more hazy and tricky. I had to sort of go, keep going deeper and deeper. The most consistent attribution I got to this reference to a well-intentioned road to hell was to a French abbot named Bernard of Clairvaux and dating to about the 1100s. So the road to hell has clearly been well-traveled for a very long time. So at the face of it, we know what this proverb means, that many may have the best of intentions in mind, and yet it ends up in a bleak and treacherous place. This is an interesting proverb when we think about narcissism because it really does take on two sorts of different directions. It's sort of like, I, don't know, I guess a two-way highway. So let's take the road to hell of the, of the survivors of these narcissistic relationships. Not the narcissistic people themselves, but the survivors, okay? These are relationships in which people keep trying and trying to keep the attention of someone who is clearly disengaged. The good intentions in this case are somebody or people who are caught in the cognitive disson cognitively dissonant and trauma bonded confusion of a narcissistic relationship and believing that they are responsible for the dissatisfaction not the narcissistic person, because they're responsible for this whole thing. And so the person, the survivor in the relationship keeps trying harder and harder. Maybe if I call them more, maybe if I express more gratitude, maybe if I praise them more, maybe if I keep the house cleaner, you know, maybe if I tell them, you know, maybe if I tell them about my accomplishments, I'll keep them on the hook. Like, I really, really want to make this work. Then maybe, just maybe, if I get these things right, I can keep them happy. I suppose all of those are good intentions to want to be a good partner, good friend, good family member. But despite doing, trying as hard as you can, you keep getting manipulated, keep getting invalidated, diminished, perhaps facing down rage or a mother, other emotional states that are unsettling. You keep trying harder, more good intentions, and deeper and deeper into a sort of personal hell. By not understanding the narcissistic patterns and the consistency of these patterns, you may have dug yourself into something you fully don't understand. You keep trying to tame it. You keep trying to master it. Who knows? Maybe it's a replication of your childhood dynamics. You kept trying and trying and trying as a child. Maybe it is just you caught in the same cycles you've always had with your family of origin, but nothing is enough. I, <clears throat> I remember someone once telling me that every year they would try harder and harder and harder to sort of satisfy a narcissistic family member on their birthday. It would start with a card, then one present, then two presents, then more and more cards and presents, and then flowers, everything, just to say maybe this is the year they will feel content. This is the year I will have gotten their birthday right. And every year they would get more and more and more criticism. It got to the point 
to when this person was within 30 days of this upcoming family birthday. She reported getting rashes and nightmares. And such is the road to hell. This poor, well-intentioned woman, no matter how much she gave, it just kept getting worse. The road to hell actually runs on the other side for a person who is narcissistic. Like I said, think of it as a two-lane highway. For a narcissistic person, they may show behaviors that have seemingly good intentions or look like good intentions. They may be doing things you actually didn't ask for, but are then unwilling to participate in the behaviors that you need. For example, buying you something that you do not need, and that's too expensive. But then, not being willing to do something like run an essential errand, that would be a lifesaver for you because it's sort of boring. So they'll get you this expensive gift, but won't do something really, really basic you need that you're not able to do. The tough part with a narcissistic person's intentions is that they are often self-serving and feed the ego of the narcissistic person, but sometimes may be, but often are not useful to the other person and may be embedded within other toxic behaviors such as invalidation and rage. These good intentions on the narcissist side can actually make the cognitive dissonance worse. The rageful reaction of the morning. And then they'll, they'll be raging at you as they head out to work and bring you flowers in the evening. The gaslighting about your feelings and then a beach vacation. Many people in these relationships will say that they are willing, absolutely willing, to give up on the bells and the whistles and the gifts and the experiences just to have the trade-off of civility and kindness. But that is the struggle with the good intentions of a person who is egocentric and self-serving. They often give gifts to prop themselves up and get angry when the receiver of the gifts is not appreciative enough. Apparently there's an appreciation bar and if you get a gift from someone who's narcissistic, you better show them the right amount of appreciation. The good intentions can be confusing and contribute to a sense of guilt for people stuck in these relationships who believe they are bad for thinking bad things about a person who ostensibly does nice things for them, gets them a bunch of flowers, for example. The narcissistic parent who may provide money is another example, but they continue to scapegoat you. The narcissistic boss who pays you a lot, but then bullies you. The confusion is really challenging. And the so-called good intentions may keep you in the relationship and maintain that road to hell. So the many intentions sort of floating around the narcissistic relationship often do not get people to the right destination, if you will, of compassion, kindness, respect, reciprocity. And while you think the relationship is moving forward, the destination isn't all that. In the long term, these relationships, let's face it, they're just not good for you. These difficult, toxic relationships are not good for you. The good intentions are not just paving this unhealthy road but may result in the confusion, which I guess we could call the potholes, on this highway to hell. So all the good intentions, what look like good intentions, on the part of a narcissistic partner, or friend, or parent, whether it's gifts or advice, whatever works for them, those good intentions, be careful to where you're driving on this road because it rarely ends up in a good place. So that's that proverb. Keep sending those proverbs in. 
we'll keep building on that and we'll recognize that this wisdom, all the things we've known, things like the road to hell being paved with good intentions, people have known this about difficult relationships. It's amazing that even, what is that, over 900 years later, we're still not listening to the advice. Thanks again.